الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah حدثني جماعة من الشيوخ وهو حديث مسلسل بالأولية كل عن أو بإسناد كل إلى سفيان بن عيينة عن عمر بن دينار عن أبي قابوس مولى عبد الله بن عمر عن عبد الله بن عمر بن عاص رضي الله تعالى عنه عن عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن يرحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء A number of mashayikh they narrate a hadith that is a hadith that is musalsal bil awaliya all on the authority of Sufyan bin Uyayna on the authority of Amr bin Dinar on the authority of Abu Qabus Mawla ibn Amr on the authority of uh, Mawla Abdullah bin Amr on the authority of Abdullah bin Amr bin Aus that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said those who are merciful they will be uh, shown mercy that those who are merciful they will be shown mercy by the most merciful meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore have mercy on those who are in the earth and the one who is above the heavens, he will have mercy upon you. This hadith is tremendous, bila shak wa bila ray, because ilm, al ilm al rahma, knowledge is mercy. Natijatuhu rahma fi dunya, wa ghayatuhu al rahma fi al akhirah. The knowledge, it is mercy. The result of knowledge is mercy in this dunya. And the overall goal and objective of knowledge is mercy in the hereafter. Is mercy in the hereafter. We begin with this hadith because this hadith is a tremendous reminder for each and every one of us, which outlines to us the nature of in the nature of knowledge, and also some important characteristics. Of those who are carriers of this knowledge. We continue going over, looking at some of the wisdom and the merits and the benefit and the virtue of this tremendous hadith, this hadith that we have been going over, the hadith of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he said, إنما ال وهي سد يعني سمعت من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that I heard from the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالنيات the actions are but by their intentions. There are a number of scholars who they began their works with this tremendous hadith, and just so we get a little more acquainted on the level of this hadith and the importance of this particular narration. It has been reported that Imam Abu Sa'id, Abu Sa'id, Abdul Rahman bin Mahdi, rahimahullah ta'ala, that he said, لو صنفت كتابا بدأت في أول كل باب منه في هذا الحديث. He said that if I was to write a book, then I would start every chapter of the book with this hadith. 
If I were to write a book, I will start every chapter of the book with this particular hadith. And this right here shows us the benefit and the importance of this particular hadith. Is that this great scholar, he deemed it as such that if he were to write a book, he would start every chapter with this hadith. Every single chapter. Now, so therein is an indication which shows us the importance and the status of this particular hadith, which bismillah ta'ala should be an encouragement for us to memorize uh, this particular hadith and to gain understanding of it, so that we understand it in a good way, so that we can apply it uh, correctly. And applying this hadith is of tremendous, tremendous, tremendous <coughs> importance and if we truly want to be successful, then we must apply uh, this particular hadith by making all of our religion sincere unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala kulli hal, he also has been narrated on him that he said, Man arada an yusunni fa kitaban fal yabda bihad al hadith. He said, Whoever wants to write a book, then let him begin with this hadith. That whoever wants to write a book, then let him begin with this particular hadith. Again, outlining and showing the importance of this particular hadith, and that this hadith is a hadith that is tremendous bila shak wa bila roi. Ala kulli hal, waqali imam Abu Sulaiman Hamad, or Hamdu bin Muhammad bin Ibrahim al Khattabi al Khattabi al Shafi'i al Imam fi kitabihi al Ma'alim rahmatullah alayhi kana mutaqaddimun min shuyukhina yastahibun al taqdim hadith al A'mal bin Niyat he mentions that our scholars they used to prefer to begin with the hadith that actions are but by their intentions. <coughs> they used to love to begin with this particular hadith. Again, showing the importance of this particular hadith, showing the status and the level of this particular hadith, bidnilahi ta'ala also an encouragement for us to memorize this particular hadith. That they begin with this particular hadith That And this is so as to point out to the people and show them That whatever something is be, uh, started or begun from the affairs of the religion that they begin it with this particular hadith so as to show people their extreme need to, of it their extreme need of this particular hadith in all of their affairs Naam? because if we want to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our actions then they have to be sincere for him and him alone Jalla wa'ala wa qala Imam ibn al-Rajib fi jami' al-ulum wal-hikam Imam ibn al-Rajib he mentions that the ulama they have agreed about the authenticity of this hadith. The ulama have agreed, ijma', consensus, that this hadith is a hadith that is authentic. Naam, it is sound. Naam. وَتَلَقِيهِ مِنْ قَبُولِ بِالْقَبُولِ وَبِهِ صَدَّرَ الْبُخَارِ كِتَابَهُ الصَّحِيحِ And they have all agreed yani, to, with the acceptance to accept this particular hadith. And Imam al-Bukhari, he began his book with this hadith. Naam. Imam al-Bukhari. Which book are they referring to? By saying that Imam al-Bukhari started his book with this hadith. Which book? Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Naam. Ahsan. Wa lahu. And Imam al-Bukhari, he brought it as a khutbah for the book. A khutbah for the book is what we would call an introduction. Right? Every book has an introduction. And in that introduction, it gives you some information about the book. It gives you some idea of the subject matter, what you're about to read, so on and so forth. It gets you acquainted with what comes next. 
Imam al-Bukhari, he utilized as his introduction to the book, this particular hadith. Naam, this was his introduction. Isharatan minhu ila anna kulla amalin la yuradu bihi wajhullah fa huwa baqi. And this was his indication and his pointing and showing out and pointing out that every action that it is not done seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it is erroneous. It does not count. And they will have no reward for it in the dunya and they will have no reward for it in the akhirah. Naam. That if you ever do anything from the righteous good deeds, Naam. And you do not intend by it the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it will not count. It will be erroneous. It will be done in vain. I want you to reflect on that. Because this is tremendous for the student of knowledge in particular, but for all of the Muslims specifically. Naam. This is tremendous for all of the Muslims. That whatever is done for righteous good deeds, it has to be done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And it is a must that we recondition ourselves to only seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Radhiya man radhiya wa kariha man kariha. Like it who like it, hate it who hate it. Naam. That we make our focus and our attachments trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will change your life. Because then it will be easy for you not to care about the blame of the blamers. Naam. Ala kulli hal. وقال إمام ابن الرجب إمام ابن الرجب also said هذا الحديث أحد الأحاديث التي يدور الدين عليها. that this hadith is one of those hadith that the whole of the religion it it revolves upon or that is built upon. right? this concept إنما الأعمال بالنيات. and what is the concept? what is the concept? Your action or by your attention, but what is the concept that that points to? That's the, that's the foundation. The, the foundation? Naam. Ay, yaduru, yani, hadha ahada hadith yaduru alayhi deen. Okay. Right. Fa hadha hadith yaduru ila ayy shi. Ila ayy shi. Of everything. It's the foundation of everything. Of everything, but what does it point you to? The foundation that you have to have what in everything? Ikhlas. Ikhlas. Ahsant. It points you to that you have to have ikhlas in everything. Naam. And having ikhlas, bila shak, bila rayb, this is from the foundations of the religion. That without it, a person will be destroyed. So we have to have ikhlas. Naam. And this particular book, I want you to try to, 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 to look and to see, because we're going to mention some more hadith in which the deen is built on, because each of these hadith point to a tremendous principle. Right? So the principle that this particular hadith points to is being sincere unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having sincerity, having ikhlas, having ikhlas in our statements, having ikhlas in our actions, having ikhlas in the matters and affairs of our heart, having ikhlas all across the board. That we have to have ikhlas, we have to do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important. This is very important. Naam. Right. So this is one of the ahadith that the religion it it يعني, is built upon. And it's been narrated on Imam Shafi'i that he said that this hadith is a third of knowledge. This hadith is a third of knowledge. And we spoke about this last week. Why did Imam Shafi'i say this hadith is a third of knowledge? Why? Anyone remember? <laughs> See, you need to do your homework. <laughs> Love it. But a third of knowledge because a person, he will or she will gain actions, right? They will gain actions seeking after reward by using three things. By using three things. The tongue, the lisan, his heart, the heart, and his, heart and, his and his limbs. Ascent. Now, so we have the tongue, the heart, the limbs. It's three things. Right? Three things. So all of your getting uh, of deeds you either, you, you, is, is going gonna, is gonna to involve these three affairs. The tongue, the heart, 
and the limbs. Now, this hadith deals with what? Which which of the three? The heart. So it deals with the heart. So therefore, it's what? A third of knowledge. A third of knowledge. And this is why Imam Shafi said that this hadith, full of the is a third of knowledge because it deals with the heart. It deals with the heart. Now, that within itself is tremendous. It's a third of knowledge. Now, and Imam Shafi he also said, يَدْخُلُوا فِي سَبْعِينَ بَابًا مِنَ الْفِقْهِ that it enters into 70 chapters of fiqh. Now, Imam Ibn Hajar, he explained that Imam, Ibn, that, that, that Imam Shafi'i, he did not intend a restriction by the number. He didn't intend that it, 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 it uh, enters into 70 only chapters of fiqh. But he meant by saying 70 to show a great number. Meaning, it enters into all of fiqh. That this hadith enters into all of fiqh. So when he said 70, it wasn't to specify that particular number, but it was to show in general that it, it, that in everything you do. Now, it's like, it's like how we say in English, and it was in a number of things. Meaning, a whole bunch of things. Not just one thing, a whole bunch of things. But as it relates to this particular hadith, rather, in everything. It is into every single affair, uh, that we have to have sincerity for, yani, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Imam Ahmed called, وصول الإسلام على ثلاثة على ثلاثة أحاديث. إمام أحمد said that the the fundamentals of Islam, the foundation of Islam, is upon three hadith. Three hadith. نعم. حديث عمر. The hadith of عمر. Which one is that one? Actually, the right one. نعم. Actually, the right one. In the Arabic language. نعم. Sense. But the hadith Aisha. In the hadith of Aisha. نعم. Anything innovative in the religion. طيب. نعم من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد طيب أحسنتم نعم والحديث نعمان بن بشير أحسنت نعم that the halal is clear نعم الحلال بين والحرام بين that the halal is clear and the haram is clear وبينهما أمور مشتبهات and between them two are affairs that you are to stay away from نعم طيب أيضا في التوجيه كلام الإمام أحمد also he mentions about the statement of Imam Ahmed فإن الدين كله يرجع إلى so the religion all of it it goes back to فعل المأمورات it goes back to doing those things that we have been commanded to do right so this way a person can understand why Imam Ahmed said that these three hadith this is what the deen is built on because it goes back to what we should do now I'm doing the righteous deeds and the commandments. What mahzurat and from staying away from those things that are haram. So in the deen, we have to one do those things we are commanded. Two, stay away from the haram, and also third, at tawakkuf anil shubahat, anil shubahat, and that we thirdly that we stop and we stay away from doubtful matters. Now that if it's doubtful. We stay away from it. That makes sense? But but these these are the three concepts that the deen is built on. And and in this, the hadith of Nu'man bin Bashir, it encompasses all of those three things. Right? All of, all of, of those three things. Doing what is wajib, staying away from the haram. Staying away from the doubtful matters. Now, all of that could be extracted from the hadith of Nu'man bin Bashir. That makes sense? But now to complete that, you need something else to complete it. Because in doing the righteous good deeds, right, how are they going to count? They're going to count, one, أَنْ يَكُونَ amal فِي الظَّاهِرْ عَلَى مَوَافِقَ sunnah. Now, so it's going to count because openly, apparently on the outside, your actions have to be in accordance to the sunnah. Hadith Aisha. Hadith Aisha. Ahsant. Naam. They have to be in accordance with the sunnah. And if they're not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu then they don't count. Naam. وَهَذَا هُوَ الَّذِي تَضَمَّنَهُ حَدِيثُ Aisha. And this is what the hadith of Aisha covers. That مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَنْ لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدُّ That whoever does in this affair of ours, whoever innovates, excuse me, 
in this affair of ours, that which is not from it, it is rejected. Naam? So this concept, this part of it, is taken care of by the Hadith of Aisha. Because in order for our deeds to count, they have to be in accordance with the, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If they're not in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they don't count. Now, I'll give you an example. If a per- you know how the way the Christians, they pray? Right? They, they fold their hand and they, on their knee and stuff like this. Right? <laughs> but if a person comes Muslim now and said he's going to pray upon this manner, would that prayer count? Could you call that salah? No. No. doesn't count. Because that's not upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it won't count. No. That makes sense? So in order for a deed to count, it has to be upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But... Secondly, أَنْ يَكُونَ الْعَمَلْ فِي بَاطِنْ يَقْصُدُ بِهَا اللَّهِ يَقْصُدُ بِهِ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Is that internally, in the inside, a person has to intend the, the face of Allah. They have to intend seeking Allah's pleasure. They have to intend, and it has to be sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so, this take, so this is taken care of by what hadith? Hadith Umar. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Ma'am, the actions are but by their intentions. So this particular hadith now, it deals with the inside. And thus, if we want our deeds to be accepted, then we know it, it takes two conditions. The first condition, it has to be sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that has in it shirk, anything that a person, they doing it يعني, for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't count. Allah Ta'ala says in the, in the famous hadith, hadith of, 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 of Abu Hurairah, uh, hadith of Qudsi, and the other nashurakai ala shirk. That I am the one who, I don't need any, yani, partners. I'm the one who is most independent. I don't need any type of association with me. Naam. فَمَنْ عَمِنَ عَمِنَ الْأَشْرَكَ فِيهِ مَعِ غَيْرِ تَرَبْتُهُ وَشِرْكَ So whoever does an action that he associates in it with me other than me, then I will leave him and his shirk. So he gets nothing. Naam. Why? Because he makes shirk. Because he associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, and, and the adilla on this are, are many. That if a person makes shirk, if shirk mixes with an action, it destroys it. Just like hadath destroys wudu. You know, hadath, a person, they, have, they make wudu. And then, they have to go to the bathroom. This is hadath. Them going to the bathroom breaks the wudu, destroys it. No more wudu. This is what shirk does to righteous good deeds. When shirk mixes with it, destroys it. No more good deeds. Good deed is gone. Now, that makes sense? But, so it has to be sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for the action to count. And also, it has to be upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in order for the action to count. Now, and the dalil was the hadith of Aisha. مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْلِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدُّ Whoever introduces into this affair of ours that which is not from it, then it is rejected. And there's another hadith that, that comes in Muslim on the authority of Aisha also where the Prophet Sallallahu he said مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمِلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فَهُوَ رَدُّ That whoever does an action that does not have on it our command is rejected. Naam. And we'll come to this when we come to this particular hadith, inshallah ta'ala. But this covers both. These two narrations, it covers both angles. It covers those who introduce an affair and they make it up. And it, cover, and it covers those who follow what was made up and what was introduced. Now, so no one gets off. You can say, well, I didn't make it up, I'm just doing it. Well, it still don't count. The one that made it up, they don't count. And the one who follows that innovative thing doesn't count. Now, play so, when we step back now, we reflect over the concept that comes in this particular hadith, then we see what? It is it's tremendous. This hadith is so vital, it's so important, that we have to know it and we have to understand it well. وَأَوْرَدَ إِبْنُ الرَّجَبِ نُقُولًا عَنْ بَعْدُ الْعُلَمَاءِ And Ibn al-Rajab, he mentions, يعني, um, narrating now, on some of the ulama. في الأحاديث التي يدور عليها الإسلام as relates to those particular narrations those particular أحاديث that Islam is built upon نعم وأن منهم من قال that they were from them those who said that they were two they were إثنان ومنهم من قال أربعة and some from them those who said no it's four حديث ومنهم من قال خمسة and from them those who said no it's five أحاديث وأحاديث التي ذكرها عنهم بالإضافة إلى ثلاثة الأولى. Meaning, you take the three 
hadith that were mentioned and these other hadith that are going to be mentioned and then put it together and these are the hadith that the deen of al-Islam is built upon. Naam. And as we'll come to see, basically, that which is mentioned in Arba'een and Nawi. Now, those are hadith that are in Arba'een and Nawi. So, the three hadith that were mentioned, the first one is the hadith that we're on now, إنما الأعمال بالنيات The actions are by their intentions. Now, right. The second one is which one? Hadith of Aisha. Now, I sent. Right. And the third one was which one? The haram is clear. Now, the haram is clear. And between those two are doubtful matters. Now, I sent that the halal is clear and the haram is clear, and between those two are doubtful matters. Also, what is added to that? Now, is the hadith in ahadakum yujma'u khalquhu fi batli ummi that one of you, yani all of you, you come together in the in the stomach of your mother for arba'ina layla for yani uh, 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 forty days nukfah as a nukfah. Yeah, it's in the hadith. This hadith is tremendous because in this hadith is the Establishment, clear proof and evidence, hadith sadiq, al masduq on qadr. Naam, clear. Clear, sarih, on qadr. Naam. So this is one of the hadith that the deen is built on. Also, the hadith, min husni islam al mar tarkuhu ma la ya'neen. That from a person's good islam is that he leave alone that which does not concern him. Naam, it's a tremendous principle in the religion. Right? And the ulama they explain, everything Allah Ta'ala will come to see more when we come to that point, because this hadith also is here in Arba'een and Nawiyyah, is that, مِنْ حُسْنِ الْإِسْلَامِ الْمَرْ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَنْفَعُ That from a person's good Islam, he leave alone that which does not benefit him. And that is what is meant by لَا يَعْنِيهِ That which does not concern him. Does not concern him, does not concern her, because it does not benefit them. It has no benefit for them. So that which a person should concern himself with are those things that will benefit them naam, uh, ultimately in the Akhirah. Those things that benefit them in the Akhirah. Naam. Also, from those ahadith that the deen it is yani, uh, built on is إِنَّ Allah طَيِّبْ لَا يَقْبَرُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا That Allah is good and He only accepts the good. That Allah is good, He only accepts the good. Naam. So therefore, individual will understand, and when they have this concept on their mind, when they're doing righteousness, then they make sure that it's built upon good. Now, likewise, this could translate into a person's economic endeavors and pursuits, because he would he would seek halal provisions, now, so that his origin of his of his monies and that is good, because Allah is good; He only accepts the good. So if a person now wants to turn around and give sadaqah, then we say if sadaqah has to be from money that's halal. If it's from money that's haram, it doesn't count. Doesn't count. Why? Because Allah is good, He only accepts that what is good. Now, so it has to be built upon good. And then you can and then you can utilize that as a as a, a measuring stick because that concept it enters into so many things. It enters into so many things. Now. But also the hadith which the deen is built upon. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. That none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. نعم. The deen. This is an important key component and concept of the deen of Al Islam is that the Muslims have a concern for one another. نعم. That the Muslims are not stingy, but that they are very charitable. They give charity, and that they're concerned with the welfare of their brothers. They're concerned with the welfare of their sisters. Now, now, now look. I want you to just, let's step back for a second. Look at all these ahadith, right? Look at all these ahadith. And so as an example to show how these ahadith, they will enrich our life. They will, they will make our life so much better in every way, shape, or form. I want you to look at it now from the standpoint of a community, right? Look at it from the standpoint of our community here, Right? If we all have on our minds that actions are by their intentions, and then we strive seeking Allah's 
face in our actions and our endeavors as relates to building the community. That will translate into so much khayr, so much blessing. Because that which is done for Allah, right, as the ulama they mentioned, that which is done for Allah, it will remain. That which is not done for Allah, it will go away. You see that? So we're trying to build a community, you want it to what? You want it to stay. You don't want it to go away. You don't want it to fall by the wayside. All the effort you're putting forward, you want it to fall by the wayside? No. That's why when we build houses, we build with strong materials, right? We make sure we lay a strong foundation. We make sure we, 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 we pour the cement for the support pillars, and so on and so forth, and for the load-bearing walls, and so on and so forth. Why? Because you don't want to put forth all that work, but then it, then it drops down, then it, then it crumbles, it falls. You don't want your work to be in vain, but you want it to stay. You want, it, you want something that is sustainable. So if we want that which is sustainable in this life and in the next, then we have to do it, what? For Allah. Right? So now imagine everyone has that on his mind. They get into work. They want to work. They want to build. They want to build a community for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is their motivation. It's not to show off. It's not to flex what they have. It's not so people can talk about them and then they come and say, oh, so-and-so has done such and such. No, they don't care about none of that. They want to do it so that when they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they get rewarded for it. Now, just think about how the, the benefit of how that would trickle down inside the community. And then think about them doing that, yani, seeking or upon, excuse me, the, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That they do it and it's upon sunnah. It's not upon innovation, not upon bid'ah, it's not upon khurafat, it's not upon superstitions, but it's upon the sunnah. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they try to do it the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught them how to do it. Look at all the khay, look at all the blessing that will come now. Now, but now they avoid doubtful things. Anything that is doubtful as a community, community say, ah, we're going to avoid that. What's halal is clear, what's haram is clear, and between them are doubtful affairs. So things that are doubtful, they stay away from it. Think about how that would, how, how that would benefit and enrich the community. Now, think about that. Things is doubtful, ah, back up from that. We don't, we don't stay away from it. But, and then, that the community has a good and deep understanding and proper belief in qadr. So they realize that Allah can, yakun. Whatever Allah wills is, whatever He does not will, will never be. Right. So in that, it they they strive taking the asbab, knowing that the tawfiq is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So they are so they don't look at yani something as if it is insurmountable, as if it is so big we can't do it. It's impossible. No, they realize that if Allah wills it, it's going to happen. If He doesn't, it won't happen. But either way, we get rewarded for our intention, so they're gonna try anyway. They won't. They won't talk themselves out of it. Say, "Oh, it's too hard. Forget it." No, they're gonna strive because they know that everything is by the qadr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Think about how that will enrich the community, right? Think about the min husn Islam is mar tarkuhu malayani that from a person's good Islam and even alone that was don't concern him. Think about how that would benefit the community. That from a person's good Islam he even alone that was don't don't concern him, doesn't benefit him. How many of the communities, they are like cars that spin their wheels in place, but they don't go nowhere. It seems like it's a bunch of action, right? But in reality, there's no progress. They spin in their wheels. And if you look at these particular communities who do that and who fall into that, when you examine them, then you will find that one commonality that they have is that they concern themselves with things that don't really benefit them anyway. You follow what I'm saying? They concern themselves with things that don't really benefit them anyway. So they sort of, so, so they may be all, yeah, they have so much information about this and this, 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 that and fair that's happening over here and over there. But then when it comes to their own community and stuff that they should know about, they don't know about. Right? They can tell you all the latest gossip about who said what, when they said it, how they said it, and you know, what they said, and so on and so forth. But then those fundamental things that they should know for themselves, they don't know. Right? You have people that can tell you all this type of stuff. Go into it. But then you tell them, okay, what's, what's, what's the dua you need to share with? You don't know. Well, you don't know that. You don't know that, but you know this? Your salah is the first thing you're going to be asked about. You don't know that. You're not well versed on that. But you're well versed on things that's none of your business anyway. 
Things that, 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 that us, men, you're not going to be asked about in the first place. You know all that stuff. But stuff you're going to be asked about, you don't know. You understand? That's like, you, you, know, you know how foolish that is? Check it out. That's like if you got an algebra test. You with me? You have an algebra test. All right? Very important. If you don't pass this algebra test, you fail the grade. You have an algebra test. So what you do, you studying. You say, I got to study. But for whatever reason, you're not studying algebra. You're studying history. Right? You know the dates, this, what took place, who was this, who was that. You're studying the history. Is that going to help you in your algebra test? Not at all. You understand? And this is the similitude of these individuals. Is that they're busying themselves with things that don't concern or benefit them anyway. They're things that they should know. They're not putting forth no energy as it relates to it. So this is why they spin it in place. The wheel spinning in place. Right? Allah must die. Sleep. The mix. They're not hearing anything. Okay. Sleep. <coughs> So these are just examples of how we implement these particular hadith, we will benefit. Also, the hadith, la yu'minu ahadakum, that none of you truly ahadukum, that none of you truly believe into a love for his brother or he loves for himself. If we, if we implemented that, where would we be as a community? How, how rich would that be? Right? That everyone had a concern for everyone and tried their best to make sure that everyone was okay. It's very important. Also from the hadith that the deen is built on is la darar wa la dirar. That there is no harm and there is no reciprocation of harm. It's very important. There is no harm, there is no embarking upon harmful things, harmful matters. And there is no reciprocation of harm. In other words, we don't do things that are that will lead to a direct harm. And we don't do things that will indirectly lead to harm. Now. So we don't do things that are harmful with them within themselves, and we don't do things that will, yani the result of them will be harm. Right? Just contemplate on that, yani for 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 a minute, and how we will enrich if, yani we implemented uh, the likes of those of those things, ma'am. Right? and so on and so forth. Also, what another hadith that is from the a hadith <coughs> that the deen it is built on is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ida amartukum bi amrin fatu minhu mastafatu. That if I command you with an action, then do from it what you have the ability to do. And this here is tremendous because this here a person they will understand the. Bounty and the ease of the deen of Al Islam. That we are only tasked to do that which we have the ability to do. That which is beyond our ability, that which we don't have the ability to do, then it is not on us to do it. And that is what helps the individual to be moderate in the religion. Naam. And that's true moderation in the religion is that you do that which you're commanded to do to the best of your ability and you stay away from the haram. Being moderate doesn't mean that you pick and choose what halal you want to do, what you don't want to do, and you pick and choose what some haram you want to do and some haram you stay away from. And that's being moderate. No, no, no. Being moderate is being a good Muslim. It's doing those things that you should be doing to the best of your ability and doing those things, yeah, uh, staying away from those things that, 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 that you're supposed to stay away from. Now, but this concept is important because now a person, they will not overburden themselves unnecessarily. Now, so as we know for the prayer, for example, if a person can stand, then they have to, they got to stand up. But if they have an ailment and they're not able to stand, then the person sits down. Right? If they, if they, if they can't sit down, then they lay down. So on and so forth. So they fear Allah to the best of their ability. They fear Allah to the best of their ability. And this is of extreme importance that we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our abilities. Now, that makes sense? Right. And also, the ulama they mentioned the hadith is had fi dunya yuhibbukallah 
abstain from the dunya and Allah will love you. Naam, have zuhud. Wazhar fi ma'in the nas, yuhibbik al nas. And abstain from what the people have with them and the people will love you. Naam. Meaning, meaning, only seek after that which is going to benefit you in the akhirah. Naam. So having zuhud, it doesn't mean that you have to be poor and, and own nothing. Huh? No. Having zuhud means that the dunya is not attached to your heart. That's what zuhud means. The dunya is not attached to your heart. The money is not inside your heart. But rather the money is in your hand. See, when the money is in your hand, then you'll spend it. Right? And it's a, it's a tool for you. But when the money is in your heart, now you become a tool for the money. So you'll do whatever it is just to get the money. You understand the difference? So the person that has zuhud is a person that the money is not inside of his heart. So his situation is the same. Whether he's rich, whether he's poor, don't matter to him. It's the same thing. He's going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he's rich, he worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can give more. If he's poor, he still worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wish he can give more. Now, and he still get rewarded for having the attention that if he had it, he would give it. You understand? But as far as him as an individual, it's not going to make him really, really over happy that he gets a lot of money. And it's not going to break him uh, and destroy him now he's in all kind of depressions because he doesn't have no money. It's the same for him. It's the dunya. Dunya come, dunya go. It's not really worth anything anyway, so who cares? Right? This is, this is zuhud. So if you abstain from the world, meaning that you look at it properly and you're not caught up in it, Allah Ta'ala will love you. And, if you. and if you abstain from what the people have with them, then the people will love you. Now, nah, people don't like people who they think always looking at their stuff and want to compete with them and chasing the Joneses and, 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 and huh? Cause that, that leads to envy, that leads to you know, hatred and enmity amongst people and so on and so forth. You understand? So if a person don't really care, alhamdulillah, mashallah, tabarakallah, mashallah, that's it. But he not, he not, he not, you know, hating on you. Man, how you get that new car? Man, how you, how you got that? How you got this? Huh? He don't care. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you with it. And that's it. You feel comfortable around him. As opposed to someone, I don't know how else to say it, but someone that's plotting on you, right? Someone come around, you feel like he's scheming on you all the time. You know, you, you don't like the way he look at your, <laughs> at your kufi. You don't like the way he look at your thaw. You, you, feel, you feel weird. Because you feel like he's scheming on you. Like, he, you know, he's, he's over-concerned about what you got and how you got it. Man, how you got that? What you do to get this? It's like, you know, you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, these type of people, you're not going to like them too much. You're not going to be your favorite person. Now, that type of person in the Muslim he's, he's annoying. <laughs> you don't want to... <laughs> right? Yeah, Allah will stand. So, if we have the zuhud in the dunya, Allah will love us. If we have zuhud with what the people got, the people are going to love us. Now, but just think about how that, yani, how that emphasizes... Uh, the brotherhood, how that emphasizes and it brings you know, the, the, the strength of connection between us and so on and so forth uh, and, and the like. So you find that from the those things in which the deen is built upon are those things that lend to brotherhood and staying away from those things that will destroy the brotherhood. Now, this is why we don't you know, uh, undercut each other in business. Right? Because that will lead to enmity. This is why if a brother proposes to a sister and they're engaged, you don't try to marry that same sister. That's going to cause enmity. Hey, how you trying to marry my fiance? That's going to cause enmity. Not going to like each other. So this is why it's haram. If someone has proposed to a sister, that's it. That's his fiance. You don't try to marry her. They're not married yet, but that's his fiance. So you don't try to marry her. That's it. You don't go to her father. Yo, man, if it don't work out, you know what I mean? No, that's going to cause enmity. Because, again, what? You feel like somebody's scheming on you. <laughs> no one likes that feeling. So all of those things that will erode the brotherhood, we stay away from it. Because part of the principles of the deen is what? Establishing brotherhood. Establishing harmony amongst each other and unity upon the truth. Upon the truth. Yeah? And that's very important. We come together upon the truth. Not just because for whatever. No. Upon the truth only. Now, but... And also the hadith ad dinu nasiha that the religion is the giving of good advice and sincerity. Now, this hadith, subhanAllah, is tremendous. Because in this hadith, it is mentioned, yani, the sincerity we're supposed to have for Allah, the sincerity we're supposed to have for the Prophet, and the sincerity we're supposed to have for 
uh, 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 the rulers and the like. Now, this is of, of extreme importance and it leads to all types of good and all types of khair on every level of the society. Now, right. So now we go to the first sentence of the hadith. Now, the first sentence of the hadith. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Naam. That verily actions are but by their intention. This is how it's translated. That actions are but by their intentions. And that is because sometimes some of the words become a little problematic when you try to uh, translate them. Naam. Because the concept that they entail yani, is not uh, reader friendly. It's not reader friendly. It's hard to put that uh, yani, in, in a way in which is easily understood. <clears throat> However, innama innama is a, a, a word that is from adawatul hasr. Naam. Innama is a word that is from those things that bring about restriction. Restriction. Naam. It's like it's like in the hadith. Oh, excuse me. It's like in the ayah innama al mu'minun al ikhwa. That verily the believers, and it's translated, verily the believers are nothing but brothers. In the mind, it's like only. The believers, they are only brothers. Naam? They're only brothers. Which is tremendous. Meaning that they are brothers. That, that's what it is. So when you say in the mind, then this excludes, this excludes everything else. Right? So actions are only by their intentions. Actions are only according and by their intentions. Now, so this is what we benefit from in Nama. So we know this is this is tremendous now. The actions are only but by their intentions. Now, well, al fil a'mal, and the ulama they explain that on the word a'mal actions, right? We don't translate it like this, but in Arabic, literally, it's the actions. We would translate it, nani, literally, right? Um, then we'll say, yani. Uh, the actions, the actions, the actions are only by uh, their, their intentions. Why is the Aleph and the Lamb upon actions? Yani, Qil is been said, Innaha khasa fil qurab. I want you to follow me now. That this L or this definite article, the actions, when you say the actions, one thing you understand from it, specifically, are those actions that will draw you near unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in one breath, or in one, one sense, from one angle, you understand that it's specifically talking about those actions that draw you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, and this is why it says, Al, Naam, Al A'mal, But also at the same time, just like it's pointing you to something that is specific in the same time and on the same breath in the fi kulli amin. At the same time, it's general for every action. Right? Because it said the actions. The actions. So that, that doesn't point out some actions and not other actions. It highlights those actions that get you near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it doesn't restrict those other actions. And this is life changing. When we truly understand the ramifications that are here, it is life changing. Now, and if we strive to purify our intentions, it is life changing. That's a game changer, as they say. Now, it's a game changer. Because what is meant by that? The Shaykh he mentions, he says, فَمَكَانَ مِنْهَا قُرْبَةً أُثِيبَ عَلَيْهِ فَاعِلُهُ so whatever from those actions are those actions that will draw near unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they intend Allah, they will be rewarded. And so, salah, siyam, zikah, yani, so on and so forth. And so for their prayer, their fasting, the charity that they give, then they will be rewarded by Allah if they intend Allah's pleasure. And if they intend to do it sincerely for Allah, they'll be rewarded. So for these 
righteous good deeds, they'll be rewarded. Now, so we understand that, that this is specifically for righteous good deeds. But also in general, مَا كَانَ مِنْهَا مِنْ أُمُورِ الْعَادَاتِ But that which is from those actions, uh, what do you say, like everyday actions. Right? Those actions that we don't call them religious actions. These are just everyday actions. Right? So for everyday actions, كَالْأَكِلْ Like eating. Naam. وَشُرْبْ And drinking. وَنَوْمْ And sleeping. Right? فَإِنَّ صَاحِبَهُ يُثَابُ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا نَوَى بِهِ أَتَقَوِّي Naam. أَتَقَوِّي عَلَى طَاعَةً That uh, the person will be rewarded for it if uh, uh, يعني, if he intends by it إِذَا نَوَى بِهِ أَتَقَوِّي Naam. أَتَقَوِّي عَلَى طَاعَةً يَحَمَكَ اللَّهُ If he intends by it to do it to strengthen himself for worship. You with me? So if a person eats, well, before we do that, قال معاذ رضي الله تعالى عنه معاذ رضي الله تعالى عنه He explained this concept. This great Sahabi رضي الله تعالى عنه He explained this concept. He said, أنا He said, أما أنا فأنام وأقوم He said, as far as me, He said, I sleep at night time, and I get up and pray. Right? But here's the shahid here. He said, فَاحْتَسِبُ مِنْ نَوْمَتِ كَمَا احْتَسِبُ مِنْ قَوْمَتِ He said, so I intend, and I hope that I'm rewarded, meaning I anticipate being rewarded for my sleep, just like I anticipate being rewarded for my standing. Now, because he understood the concept. Because he's only sleeping to strengthen him to stand. He's only sleeping to strengthen him to, 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 to re, yani, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, energize him so he can stand up better. So that's why, that's why he sleeps. That's his intention. Sleeping so I can worship better. Now, so likewise, if a person eats or they drink and their intention is to strengthen my body, yeah, I need to eat healthy, good food, so I have energy, so I could worship better. Right? So, if a person does that, everything that they do, they be rewarded for, inshallah, time. So, if a person goes and gets that, does some push-ups to strengthen his muscles, right? With the intention, so I can use them, fi sabirila. So, if somebody needs help moving, I'm the man for your job. I can, I can, I can lift stuff. I can help people. If someone needs me to help carry the groceries, yeah, my neighbor help carry the groceries, I'm the man. I can carry the groceries. I'll be doing push-ups. I can do it. Give me the bag. Right? If, and, and so on and so forth. So if they intend to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of these things, then they'll be rewarded for it. That's a game changer. Now, so for the eating, the sleep, the, the drinking, so on and so forth, if you intend to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that yeah, you're doing those things so to strengthen you, to make you stronger, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll be rewarded. This is life changing. Right? This is we need this as individuals, we need this as communities, our children, they need to understand this, right? Because this is really what it's all about. Accumulating good deeds, doing righteousness, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us seeking Allah Ta'ala's face. Naam. Wa ida naam. Fal alif wal lam fil niyat. Okay, so we spoke about the alif and the lam, the the inside of a'mal. What about the alif and the lam inside of an niyat? Right? Because innamal alif and lam a'mal bin niyat. An niyat. So what about the alif and the lam in the word niyat? Or intentions, ma'am, the intentions. The Shaykh he mentions Bedal, Bedalan, Min Bamir Ha that the Aleph and the Lamb they take the place of the pronoun it. Well pronoun ha, but yeah, Bamir, I'll not translate Bamir. But in this context it will be it or yani actions are by their their intentions. Now their intentions. Okay. What do we benefit from this? Al A'malu because originally what was understood, or what a person could understand by saying it's better, is that what? Al-a'malu bin niyatiha. 
that actions are but by their intentions, meaning a person will be rewarded based upon their intentions. Right? That makes sense? But, so now, we have the Aleph and the Lam. Innam al-A'malu, then we have bin niyat. So Aleph and Lam and niyat. But also we have this bat, harfun jar. So we have the jar wa majroor. Naam, I'm not going to try to even explain what that is. Jar wa majroor. Right. When you have this construction in the Arabic language, it's always linked to something. So when you say bin niyat, by their intentions or by the intentions, that is grammatically linked to something else in the sentence. Now, it could be said, it could be articulated, or it could be hidden. Right? It could be implied. In this case, it's implied. Taqdiruhu mu'atabara. Meaning, are giving consideration in accordance to. A. Enna al-a'mal mu'atabara bin This is what understood by that construction. Enna mal a'malu bin The action of by their attentions. A. Enna mal a'mal Naam, mu'tabira biniyatiha. That actions, the actions are given consideration according to their intentions. So if a person intends good, intends Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will be rewarded. If a person does that same deed but they don't intend to be rewarded by Allah, they will not be rewarded. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi brought a tremendous example. He says, For man kanat hijratuhu to Allah wa rasulih, for hijratuhu to Allah wa rasulih. Wa man kanat hijratuhu to dunya aw imra'atin yankihuha, for hijratuhu na ma hajra ilayn. The same thing. He says, so whatever his hijrah, same hijrah, right? Same hijrah. If a person made hijrah and their intention was for Allah and his messenger, then they get rewarded. A person does the same thing, but they don't intend to be rewarded by Allah. They intend to get something, some worldly gain, or they intend to marry some woman. So they, so they, so they, they, they both making a hijrah, but this one is making hijrah to Allah's messenger, and this one's making hijrah because he want to get that piece of the, the world, you know, a business opportunity for him, or because he want to marry that woman. So that's why he made his hijrah because he want to marry so and so, right? Same action. One gets rewarded, one doesn't. Now, one gets rewarded, one doesn't. It's like the prayer. One person, he stands and he prays for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, and then, as we know, in the time of the Prophet, I said, likewise right now, you have munafiqun. Those who really don't believe in Allah, but they act like they're Muslims. So that munafiq, he's in the saf. Maybe he's standing next to the believers. Huh? He's standing next to the believers inside the saf. But the believer gets rewarded, the munafiq, he don't get rewarded. But he did the same stuff. He recited he made rukur, he made sujood, he made taslim, to the end of it, right? But he did nothing. Why? Because he didn't intend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather he intended just to be seen by men. Right? So that's what he got. He was sought by men. He's, he intended to be seen, he was saw, he, 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 people saw him. Come on, that's it. Nothing else. Now, so this is important now because it emphasizes for us that just doing the deed with them within itself correctly, that's only half the battle. That's not all of it. You understand what I'm saying? And that helps us to be humble. Helps us to be humble. So a person never gets big headed on what they have done. I have prayed so many rakahs, I gave so much money, I made hajj, I made umrah, so on and so forth. The believer is 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 grounded. He's 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 humbled. He's never arrogant because now he understands. Yes, I have done these things, but I don't know if Allah will accept them. I'm doubting now my intention. Was my intention purely, purely pure? I don't know. I'm scared. So that motivates him to try again. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me do more worship. He never get big headed because he don't know. I don't know if Allah accepted it. Yeah, I prayed, but I don't know if Allah accepted it. I fasted. I don't know if Allah accepted it. Maybe my intention wasn't right. Let me try again. Let me try again. Let me try again. You understand? And these are, these are things that sometimes we don't, we don't reflect. One of the ulama they mentioned, they said that if a teacher is teaching and if only one student comes to class, he feels sad and he don't want to teach no more, then this is an indication that he was never teaching for Allah. He was never teaching for Allah. Because the one who is sincere, he teaches for Allah. So whether it's one person or a million people, it's the same difference. If it's a million, he don't get all souped up and happy. Oh, it's a million. Ooh, 
No, he don't care. It's a million people. Okay, whatever. I'm doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether it's a million people or it's one person or it's nobody in front of me, just the people online, who cares? It's for Allah. It's peace of Allah. I'm doing this to be watered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who cares who sees it? Who cares who hears about it? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Now, so these are, these are things that we have to reflect on right now. These are things we have to reflect on. One of the people from the past, he said so many years, he prayed inside the first row. And he, and, 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 and he, he re- was really convinced that he was doing that for Allah. He said until the time came, the day came when he was late to get into the first row, and he was in the second row, and he felt ashamed people saw him in the second row. He said, then he realized, all that time I was praying in the first row, it wasn't for Allah. It was not for Allah. You see? So we have to strive to cleanse and to clean our intentions. Now, when niyyah fil lugha, inshallah ta'ala we're going to end on these points, that the niyyah intention aside of the language, it means qasd. It means qasd. Now, and this is where uh, my English, it, it fails me. Right? Uh, I'm blaming on me. It's my English. It fails me. Because there might be another word for it, but I don't know it right now. Because uh, typically, niya and qasd are translated the same. Intentions. Now, I'm intentions. That what the person intends, that what they intend for. Right? Ala uh, hal. It's the niya is your intentions. Right? Your intentions. وَتَأْتِي لِتَمْيِيزِ بَيْنَ الْعِبَادَاتِ And the niyyah, it comes, because it, it will distinguish between two, yani, two different worships. Because you have two different worships that are the same in their outside appearance, but your intentions work on distinguish. Right? So, for, for example, فَرُ عَلَيْنْ فَرُ Obligation from an obligation. Right? Uh, let's say for whatever reason, uh, yani, uh, you overslept, let's say for example. You overslept the Dhuhr. Now it's Asr time. So now you come to the masjid and you come to praise. Four raka'at. Dhuhr four raka'at. Asr four raka'at. Right? The, the role is praying Asr. The people in the masjid is praying Asr. But you, your intention is to what? It's to pray Dhuhr. Because you didn't pray Dhuhr. Naam? So your intention, you're going to pray Dhuhr. So now that what distinguishes those four raka'at from those four raka'at. That this is Dhuhr, not Asr. That makes sense? So the niyyah, it distinguishes between uh, two uh, uh, obligatory affairs. It will also distinguish between an obligatory affair and a voluntary affair. What could that be an example? What's a good example for this one? Making up your fast from Ramadan. Right? You missed some days of Ramadan because you were sick or you were on a journey. So now Ramadan is over. You have to make those days up. So now it comes a Monday and a Thursday. So you say, I'm going to fast Monday. But for you, your fasting that Monday is wajib. It's fadu. It's obligatory. Why? Because you're making up from Ramadan. That would distinguish from the voluntary fast on Monday. So yeah, you're fasting and it may appear that it's voluntary, but your intention is it, it, wajib for you. Because you're making up a day, but you miss in Ramadan. Right? That makes sense? So that's an example of how Yani, it could distinguish between an uh, obligatory affair from a voluntary affair. Also, yani, wa tamyiz al ibadat an al adat. Also, it will distinguish between acts of worship from everyday actions. Right? Because it could be the same looking thing, but for one, in one case, it's, a, it's worship, in another case, it's just an everyday action. What's an example of this? The Sheikh, he mentions, he says, كَلْ غُسُلْ مِنَ الْجَنَابَ وَالْغُسُلْ لَتَبَرُّدْ A person, he makes ghusl after having relations with the spouse. After having relations with the spouse, the person makes ghusl. They make ghusl so they can yani, be back into the realm of ibadah, so they can pray. Right? Because when they uh, 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 yani, have relations with the, uh, the spouse, then they are sidelined. They are sidelined. Now, they 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 to the uh, the gem. That's why it's called janabah, because you're sidelined from from worshiping. Wait, you make ghusl to to get back in, uh, to worshiping, back in the game, as they say, for lack of a better term. Right? That makes sense. You get sidelined. You want to sideline. You want to bench, and then now you got You want to go back into the field. So like this, and then you have a person, for example, do the same action because the ghusl is just to wet all of the body. Right? Do the same action, but for them, it's because they want to cool off. It's hot. So they want to cool down. 
So they jump in the shower. The other person jump in the shower because he wanted to make busul. Yani, to get the janabah off of him. So he makes busul. Same action, but for one, it's worship, and for the other, it's an everyday affair. Now, it's an everyday affair. So it is incumbent that we remember the likes of this because the wuss or yani uh, or they do it yani just to clean yeah, just to clean themselves. But it's important that we do this because we understand that the intention is very important because you have certain times and situations where it can be the exact same action, but depending upon the intention, it will be worship or not. The exact same action, but depending upon the intention, you'll be rewarded or you won't be rewarded. Now, and these affairs are of extreme importance for us. They're of extreme importance. So that we are able to truly seek after the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa goes on to say, وَإِنَّ مَا لِكُلْ إِمْرِ إِمَّا And that verily everyone will have that which they intended. Now, but بِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى We'll pick up from that portion of the hadith in the next class. فنكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا